and welcome back to Frog Clan. Today we are picking up where we left off, and I'm going to apologize in advance in case you hear anything in the background. Uh, we do have neighbors upstairs, and they walk very loudly sometimes. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into our time skip. I don't actually have a lot of time today, and I was debating even doing an episode for this week, but I figured something beats nothing, so this is going to be a much shorter one than usual. The Twilight Paw ran too fast over a harsh ground and hurt their paws, and also got a running nose. Poor little Conch Kid has gotten kitten cough, with it, which is scary, since that's usually not a good long-living kitten. Um, as the herb stores are inspected, it's noticed that some of the cat mint went bad and will have to be replaced, which is definitely not what we want to see going into Leaf Bear. Rain Kit falls into a river, but is saved by Creek Jumble. So, last time we had our extinction event, which was basically an early and very harsh winter. And so, moving forward, we're going to just be recovering for that. We'll get our fourth and penultimate event at 120 moons, which will probably be in a couple of episodes if I can only have the same length of time. But we'll go over our cats here real quickly, especially all of these little kittens here. <laughs> this is Bite Kit, who's Acorn Cress's only daughter. Looks like she has one white paw. She's insecure, interesting clan history, and is currently whining for milk. We have Sneeze Kit, who is one of Irish Stripes' kits, who's sweet, confident with words, and loves to be helpful. We have Rowan Kit, who's growing into the calico patternings, it looks like. She is daring and active imagination, is wishing her brother would play more quietly. We have Conch Kit, who is sick. Let's see what they look like healthy. Aw, just cute little heart there, too. Scared after having a nightmare, but she's bullying in a moss ball hunter. Then we are going into basil nipples kits. First up we have Weed Kit, who is nervous and splashes in puddles. Shining Kit, who's refusing to eat birds, messing cats, giving them bossy, interesting clan history. Rain Kit, who fell in the water, who's daydreamer, splashes in puddles, staring at nothing in particular. Very fitting then. Pearl Kit, who's thinking about being in trouble, and funnily enough, is troublesome and interested in oddities. So that's our little kits growing up a bit more here. Here's with Sirius Star, the first leader to actually make it through an extinction event, but at the cost of three lives. Snip Husk, who's in awe at the fact that he did. We are going to have quite a few cats that are grief stricken with the loss, but I'm just not as many as I'd expected. Murkclaw, our only remaining medicine cat who's having a hard day. Our savior of last episode, Jirachi Lightning, who's sparring with some clanmates. Here's Twilight Paw, who is sore with cracked pads and a running nose. Their brother, Spider Paw. That's really everybody. The vast majority of our clan is young cats now. We have effectively three lines of kits and apprentices. We get some Betany. Greyheart finds a loner who offers their healing skills in exchange for shelter. But after hearing more about our clan, the loner politely declines joining. But we have met a cat named Claybat. Let's check them out real quick. Clay's a definitely good name for that coloration there. She is confident, a great kit sitter. Tabby Pelt, Grey Eyes, 50 Moons Old. And we don't really know much about her besides that she's a former clan cat. So maybe she'll come back, or maybe not. We'll save that role for another time. But it looks like we are finding a wounded cat near the Thunder Path. And we find that they're already hunting with their ancestors, so we take a moment to say a prayer for the cat and we bury them. Okay. Not very much luck in our actual recruiting there. We'll go on time skip. Twilight Paws Paths have healed. Blitzo Shadow's gotten a stomach ache. 
Bike Kit has gotten kitten cough, but Conch Kit no longer has white cough. So I'll take a look at those kittens in a second. It's gonna go around this winter, it just seems. There's quite a few of them too, so passing from one to another. Based on the bull misstep and slipped from a rock but landed on her feet nimbly, with their claymates commenting on the show of dexterity. Rowan Kit was playing with jay feathers earlier and decides to wear some of them. Let's take a look at Rowan Kit. Aww. She's gonna be such a pretty cat. I'll take the quickest scroll possible through some of these relationships. I was just about to say I'm seeing a lot of positive effects and those followed immediately by a very negative effect. I may also take a moment to just go through some of these cats' relationships and see how they're doing after that event, at least in the adult's perspective, and we'll take a look at the kits in a bit later. Our own kid is sticking her paw into an old snake hole. That does not seem like a very good thing to be doing. Conchka, who's feeling better, is making a mean face at Agnes, who they were probably sharing some medicine cat space with. Mika, who's only two moons old, is worried they won't do a good enough job. You are just a child. Enjoy your kitdom. Okay, nothing much there. The kits had the most interesting interactions, honestly. Murclaw gathers some Elaine after a nice little sun bath. The apprentices learn about octopus. An octopus, octopi. There are dark clouds on the horizon. With Sirius Star wonders if they should continue. Uh, we did get our passes reset after last event, so we're going to not proceed. Just not worth it. The patrol finds the scent of a large dog wandering along the edge of the territory. I think we will proceed here. Try to keep a watch from a distance, but spots us and we have to scatter. Everyone escapes just fine, but we do lose track of it, and it could be anywhere out there so lurking, waiting to attack. Always scary. Peppa Paul has reached the age of six moons and has been made an apprentice. Surprising Greyheart, the first thing that Skypaw does after their apprentice ceremony is gather moss just to make sure everyone has fresh bedding. So we'll see who Peppa Paul was apprenticed to. Greyheart's a young mentor, but not always a bad thing. With as many kits as we have, there's going to be some overlap anyway. Murclaw picks himself up out of their nest and begins a day anew with a fresh conviction in their heart. Twilight Paw's running nose has finally stopped running, but so Shadow Simicake has slept. Ignaz's broken back has healed, but they'll always carry evidence of the incident on their pelt. Bite Kit has recovered from Kitten Cough, but Sneeze Kit and Conch Kit both contracted, so it really is just going around the nursery right now. The Messin Cat Apprentice from Odd Clan comes asking for herbs. They refuse to say why their clan needs them, and our clan decides not to share our precious few mallow. The Messin Cat Apprentice comes again. Poor sick kittens. Snippus wants to get to know Jirachi Lightning better. And here's Agnes, who did end up with a scar, which means that she's going to get another random mutation, so we get to roll for that. Okay, well, since she already has stuff on a lot of different parts of her body, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and roll for the remaining three slots that she has open. It looks like we're going to get it on her eyes. Let's see what we get there. Oh, it's not always good. She got um the negative trait for eyes. So she is blind. But so Shadows reporting to Deputy details about their recent patrol. Twilight Paw wishes that they were back in a nursery. Aww. Meanwhile, Spider Paw is trying to sneak out of camp alone. Here's Pebble Paw, who is practicing some battle moves. He turned out to be thoughtful, interested in herbs, and an avid play fighter. Here is Sky Paw, who's reenacting a move they saw Blisso Shadow do who's righteous, lover of stories, and confident with words. You know, since both of their parents were originally medicine cats in some capacity, medicine cat warrior hybrids, I guess, 
um, and Pipple Paw has these traits, and at least one uh, mutation. I do think we'll go ahead and actually switch over Pebble Paw to Medicine Cat Apprentice. I think he'll thrive there. And we'll have plenty of warriors and even possible mediators in the future with the rest of these kids. My kid's trying to growl menacingly. This kid is rolling around on the ground. Conch Kit says Rowan Kid is boring and no fun. Says the poor kid who's been sick half their life. Aww. We Kit, no. We Kit's crying quietly. Shining Kit is worried about Rowan Kit. Rain Kit's wondering what it'd be like to have a fish for her tail. Just looking at Pebble Paw's description here, just healing and fighting. That seems like a pretty good blend for his parents there. Just healing and fighting, yep. We feel a presence, join us. And we greet the Star Clan cat with a nod as we pause. Pebble Paw takes their lead from her clown, tucks their paws together neatly, sitting to converse with the Star Clan cat. I gather some goldenrod too. Jason Nibble brings a patrol of mentors and apprentices out, but no one sets up to teach. It's a little awkward, but we just to attend to other duties. But Spider-Paw and Jirachi Lightning have a much better time together. But so Shadow finds a wounded cat near the Thunder Path. We approach injured cat and see signs of life. Alarmed, we gently pick up the cat and take them back to camp to be treated. The grateful cat decides to join the clan. Azizi Dapple has joined the clan, and our reputation of outsiders has improved. Okay, so Azizi Dapple is an adult female cat with gray eyes and a speckled gray pelt, medium fur length, 65 moons old. She is insecure, a skilled mediator, and a good teacher. Formerly a kitty pet and is injured with a broken jaw. They got lost after wandering away, and when they returned home, they found their two legs were gone eventually finding their way to the clan. At least Azizi Dapple is here with us now. I'm going to go ahead and roll to see if she has any traits. So it looks like she was not left because she was a weird looking cat. She is a normal cat. Snip Husk tells himself that they can't let these feelings consume them and said they have to learn to live with it. Bright Torrent misstepped and slipped from a rock, dislocating a joint. Hair Shadow tells himself they can't let these feelings consume them, instead of learning to live with it. Hair Shadow got their paws stuck in a two-leg trap, and while they eventually escape, their leg is heavily injured. Rowan Kit is playing around on the ice over tide pools, slipping and sliding every which way. They slip a little too much and take a tumble. Conch Kit no longer has white cough. As the earth sores are inspected by the messing cats, we know some betony has gone bad. Shining Kit falls into a river, but is saved by Sniff Husk. So while Hair Shadow kind of came to the conclusion that he's going to have to live with his grief, I feel like Hair Shadow was still very distracted on their first trip back out of the camp and wasn't really aware of the dangers for himself and stumbled into a trap. They have a mangled leg. Okay, so hopefully... Hair Shadow is gonna at least get a scar out of it. Mysterious Star wants to get to know Blitzo Shadow better. Snip Husk is staring off into space. It's easy dabbles, hoping they'll make it through Leaf Bear. My Kit is afraid of being in the way. Rowan Kit is injured with some bruises, but is refusing to e eat the herbs medicine cats given them for it. Conch Kit is knocking over Greyheart. Shining Kit is telling Conch Kit to catch them some fresh prey. Rain Kit has tiny little paws. And all of our um, kits now are two moons away from their apprenticeship, so really they should be starting their apprenticeship about the same time we're getting into uh, springtime, which will be good. While searching for some specific herbs, Murklaw is startled by weird sounds and whispers on the wind. We follow the strange sounds and find the bodies of an unknown queen with their kits beside them, slowly going cold. Pebble Paw goes back to camp to find help bring their bodies back to camp and to pay respects. We've been failing quite a few of these kinds of recruiting missions lately, and I think that's 
probably just a testament to how harsh the leaf bear would be. What, both between the big freeze and leaf fall and the actual cold of leaf bear. That would probably just make it really hard for a lot of non-traded cats to live, and even some traded cats if they don't have the right ones. So, I think this really more so speaks for the harshness of the conditions now. The apprentices have nice one-on-one -on -one practice sessions with their mentors. We track the scent of a large dog wandering along the edge of the clan's territory. I will go ahead and proceed here. I just have trust in our cats. Creek Jumble selflessly takes the lion's share of the run as patrol leads the dog on, exhausting themselves almost to the point of danger, but leading the dog far away from our borders. The clanmates support them on their long walk home once it's all over their purrs, mixing Creek Jumble's exhausted pants. Creek Jumble has been kind of an unsung hero <laughs> of this. We find a kitty pet begging for their household to come back. Basir Sar finds them collapsed by a thunder path, wailing for their housefolk. We comfort them, asking them why they are left here. They've been sick and are maybe too much of a burden. We offer them a place in our clan, which they accept, looking longly at the thunder path as they are led away. And Eva has joined the clan. Ooh, Eva's very unique in her markings. She's a senior adult female with cyan eyes and a rosette pelt. An indigo leather collar, 114 moons old, so close to elder time. She's charismatic, a talented swimmer, and a good storyteller. She could be a good mediator for us, too, since we've gone so long without. She's sick with yellow cough, which could be better, could be worse. Uh, this is what she looks like healthy. So she is a very pretty cat. Uh, let's see... Let's go ahead and roll and see if she's got any traits. Yes, and bad. Does not look like she has any traits. So hopefully something comes along and gets her a random mutation. Okay, so moving into Moon 95. Azizi Dapple dies from the broken jaw. I guess we just weren't good enough to heal that. And we mourn their loss as moments of their life are sharing stories. Sneeze Kit is free of kitten cough, once again able to play in Frolic. Rowan Kit's bruises have healed. Azizi Dapple died from the broken jaw. Twilight Paw was seen speaking with someone from Bog Clan. Pebble Paw was seen talking with a traveling loner healer on the border. Wonder if that's the um, old clan cat Claybat there. Snip Husk is looking forward to today. Basil Nibble is worried about Weed Kit. Nagness is worried about Conj Kit, probably just with all sickness going around. Creek Tremble is being begged by Wee Kit to teach him a few moves, despite Wee Kit being a kit. They won't be a kit very much longer. I believe next moon they'll be apprentices. Twilight Paw is wondering if they'll have to fight a battle anytime soon. Hopefully not. Uh, looks like she's 43 experience. Uh, so she's not going to be um, a warrior by next moon at 12 months, but it'll probably be a bit closer to 14 or 15 even. Spider Paw's a little bit more advanced, uh, making sure to wake up early to train. He could well be a warrior by next moon, but I think he'll probably need a little bit longer too. Bike Kit doesn't want to be an apprentice because they're afraid of disappointing the clan. Bike Kit, you need to stop breaking my heart here. Rowan Kid is nervous for her apprentice ceremony. Wee Kid doesn't want to be an apprentice yet. Rain Kit, meanwhile, is bouncing around in excitement. Pearl Kid is thinking about pool shade. A lot of the kids do not want to grow up yet, but they're running out of time for that. We go to try and search for some burdock, but we are unsuccessful, and after digging for a long time through the snow and ice, we had to admit failure. Pebble Paw in particular is shivering and chilled to the bone by the time they return, empty pawed and miserable. Pebble Paw got frostbite. That's not great, but it probably will result in a scar and a random mutation, so perks are perks, I guess. All the apprentices are taken out by their mentors to have kind of a nice last little training practice assessment thing. Spider Paws arguing with Jirachi Lightning about a specific move. Tired of hearing about how they don't understand, Jirachi Lightning swings around, 
performed a flawless rendition of the technique. Chasin, Spiderpaw lowers their gaze. They'll follow Jirachi Lightning's way of doing things then. We hear a cat hissing from pain, and we approach cautiously. The owner lifts her head and asks for help. A serious star agrees they can't leave a fellow cat to die. Adam has joined the clan. Let's take a look at Adam. Oh, wow. Adam has a torn pelt. She is a senior adult with sage eyes, a single striped pelt, 111 moons old. Childish, keen eye, and incredible runner. She doesn't say how she got this scar, but she is a very interesting looking cat. That is a cat with a story. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and see if Adam here has any mutations. Ooh, she does. Looks like she actually has multiple with a total of three. Okay, so Adam here has fuzzy ears, venomous teeth, and a prehensile tail, which is a very interesting combination there. I definitely feel like if she had a bit more of a scary nature beyond childish, she would be a force to be reckoned with. I guess you can kind of take childish in a few different ways, but as is, I don't know if she's actually that much of a threat or concern for the clan. Okay, then we'll go ahead and go one more moon. Okay, so we're gonna have a lot of ceremonies this moon. But Sirius Star calls the clan to meeting, declaring Twilight Pod to be a warrior. Oh, I wasn't expecting Twilight Paw to have made it. They are now called Twilight Glide and are celebrated for their drive. But Sirius Star has been following the progress of Spider Paw for moons and feels it's time for them to get their warrior name. They are granted the name Spider Smoke in honor of their initiative. Bite Paw carefully touches new noses with their new mentor, Drachi Lightning, looking quite intimidated and nervous. That's in character for Bite Paw, but especially being given to the largest cat in the clan. Sneeze Paw touches noses with their mentor Creek Jumble, looking bored and unimpressed, but inside they're bouncing around with euphoria like they're still a kit. Newly made apprentice Roman Paw touches noses with their mentor Mysterious Star. Conch Paw touches noses with new mentor Ignis. Weed Paw has been given Snip Husk as their mentor. Surprising Adam, the first thing that Shining Paw does after their apprentice ceremony is gather moss just to make sure everyone has fresh bedding. Even though they are excited to finally be made an apprentice, it takes a bit of coaxing by Basil Nipple for Rain Kit to set forth for their ceremony. Basil Nipple watches in pride as her named Rain Paw in touch noses with Twilight Clyde. Basil Nibble watches with pride as Pearl Paw is named and given to Bright Torrent to Apprentice Ender, knowing that they're a good choice. I don't know if we actually have any overlaps there. Bright Torrent's dislocated joint has been popped back into place and is feeling much better. Twilight Glide's got a stomach ache. Adam's pelt is no longer torn. The French clan medicine cat comes asking if we have any mallow to spare, but we only have enough for ourselves and we refuse to share. Basil Nipple is trying to fluff up their nest and they saw a thorn inside of their bedding. Another prank, but it couldn't fool them. We're gonna check out all of these apprentices, do a quick last patrol, and we'll leave it off there, I think. The serious star is wondering how Bright Torrent's doing. Snip us can't believe they overslept today. Of all days, all the ceremonies. Ignis is acting suspicious on the same moon she's got an apprentice, okay. Trachi Lightning was wondering if Twilight Paw, her daughter, would be chosen for the next gathering. Interestingly, it looks like Hair Shadow has passed over for one of the many new apprentices in lieu of Twilight Glide, who's a brand new warrior, so it probably makes sense that she feels that others are judging her. So here's Twilight Glide, at 12 moons old, very pretty cat. She's currently boasting Lally about having defeated an enemy warrior on patrol the other day. She turned out to be ambitious and an eloquent speaker. And here's Spider Smoke, who's con spending a considerable amount of time grooming. Smoke definitely makes sense for the color of his pelt here. And he too is ambitious and a lore keeper. So here's Bite Paw. She's currently basking in the sun. 
insecure, but interested in clan history and a careful listener. Sneezepa is having a hard day. He is compassionate but confident with words. Rowanpa is acting angsty, charismatic with an active imagination. Conchpa is also acting angsty, cold and a mossball hunter. Weedpaw wants to learn as many fighting techniques as they can. She is insecure but splashes in puddles. Shining Paw had quite the adventure today. He is loyal, interested in clan history, and splashes in puddles. Rainpaw is busy chastising fellow apprentices, but no one's sure what for. He is strict, splashes in puddles. Finally, have Pearl Paw, who's having a hard time keeping up with the others. She's troublesome and interested in oddities. Just at a glance, the warriors and apprentices seem to be lined up pretty well here. So I'm kind of curious to just, you know, keep it there. See where things go. I'm just gonna give this a quick scroll through here. See if they have any immediate feelings about their mentors. Because apparently that's something that can happen. It's very interesting to me. We definitely effectively just pulled our able cats right there. So, we'll go through patrols and see what we see. Okay, not much there. We kind of have a grab bag of success and not success with all the new apprentices there. Um, mostly just feelings of mutual relationships being improved at the border. But one very excitable dog. And some not so great training sessions. But... I think I'll go ahead and leave it off here. I hope you all enjoyed seeing the clan kind of explode its growth here. I know I certainly did. Let me know who your favorite new apprentice is in the comments. I will see you all next week. Until then, stay safe and bye!